Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca Saga. We are back at the 1914 tournament of San Petersburg and uh, uh, Jose Rol Capablanca with the black pieces faces Akiba Rubinstein, the only player who defeated him in the 1911 tournament of San Sebastian. Uh, so this is round three and in round one uh, Capablanca defeated Aaron Nimsovich. In round two it was that very nice draw against Frank James Marshall and now uh, r really a strong opponent. And again Akiba with the white pieces... Um, Akiba was like Capablanca in terms of strength, also a virtuoso of the of the endgame, but uh, he also studied opening, so that made him a very deadly opponent. And uh, this game has been analyzed by every great player. Uh, Kasparov analyzed it. Uh, I don't know if it was in My Great Predecessors or, or some other book, but he spoke of it a lot, and he uh, he held uh, Akiba Rubinstein to, to a high regard as uh, his contribution to chess is uh, somewhat overlooked. Uh, uh, because he never uh, achieved that World Chess Championship title. Uh, but uh, yeah, a, lo a lot of players uh, hold Rubinstein in very high regard. And uh, well, you'll see why in this game. Uh, so Akiba has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have d5 by Capablanca, uh, knight to f3, knight to f6 and c4. Uh, we have e6 transposing into the queen's gambit declined and knight to c3. Knight bd7. Uh, and here bishop to g5. This is all standard uh, queen, queen's gambit decline stuff uh, played even today. Uh, bishop to e7, e3 uh, and Capablanca castles. We have rook to c1, developing a rook, rook to e8 uh, and queen to c2. Uh, the idea is the bishop will be developed to d3 and then to pressure the h7 pawn. Uh, and also, uh, in some lines, maybe in the future, if uh, the pawn is captured, e4 will be an idea also. Uh, we have c6 by Capablanca, strengthening the center, and now bishop to d3. And as usual, only now that the light square bishop has been developed, uh, Capablanca grabs the uh, c4 pawn, uh, so he will make use of this uh, bishop's position to, to further develop on the queen side. b5, attacking the bishop, bishop to d3, and now... Uh, the threat from White's perspective here is knight e5. You want to eliminate the defender of this defender of this defender. So basically the idea is to win the h7 pawn. And here Capablanca could uh, defend it with h6. It, uh, it It is playable. But then after bishop captures, knight captures, knight e5 uh, attacking the c6 pawn. Bishop b7 black goes into this very passive uh, setup that uh, that is very unpleasant to play. So here Capablanca uh, plays a different line. He plays a6. It's a pawn sacrifice, but it's a uh, it's a really creative pawn sacrifice. It has been played before and it has been played uh, after. But um, yeah, well, you'll see what I mean. Uh, Rubinstein says, "All right, knight e5." Now the idea is the same. You cannot capture. If you capture, then pawn captures, eliminates the defender of the h7 pawn. And uh, here Capablanca just plays bishop to b7. He doesn't mind. Uh, this position has been played uh, a year after this game in, in New York. Uh, Lasker played it against Hodges, but not Emmanuel Lasker, Edward Lasker, uh, his distant relative, where queen to b6 was played. So uh, I'm sure he knew about the game Capablanca, uh, Rubinstein versus Capablanca, so he thought queen b6 is an improvement to Capablanca's bishop to b7. Uh, but okay, that's a different game. And here after bishop to b7, uh, we have... Knight captures on d7. Rubinstein says, all right, uh, I'll, I will take that pawn, sir. Uh, queen captures, now comes bishop captures on f6, bishop captures on f6, and now the defender of the h7 pawn is eliminated, bishop captures on h7. King to h8, and now comes bishop to e4. So what's Capablanca's idea here? Why, why did he give up a pawn instead of playing that uh, sort of a passive position? Uh, well, now Capablanca starts a series of trades. He, he, now Capablanca wants to trade pieces and go into the endgame being a pawn down. And this is his idea. He plays e5. And okay, d captures on e5, rook captures on e5, and Rubinstein castles. His king is now very safe. And until Capablanca plays c5, he doesn't really have any compensation for the pawn, as this bishop is hemmed in on b7, not really doing anything. So first, queen to e7, uh, pressuring the bishop here, and also... Uh, a nice support to c5, if, if c5 will ever be played. Uh, the queen must remain on the 7th rank to, to keep an eye on the bishop on b7. Bishop to f3, and now uh, c5 is a bit too soon. If you play c5, then you get bishop captures, queen captures, and rook c to d1. 
and white is white is doing just fine. If you try something like rook g5 to create some sort of uh, checkmating ideas, uh, then uh, Rubinstein can very very nicely defend with knight e4, attacks the rook, uh, blocks the queen, rook g6. Now, okay, the knight is pinned, the knight cannot move, although you can always move it to g g3, not a problem. Uh, but uh, white can play actively, rook d6, now we can have rook d8, rook d1, doubling up, captures, captures, and uh, well, yeah, after c4, white would have white would have a, a very nice game, f3, defending the knight, uh, and also uh, blocking, uh, blocking the queen here, so now even the knight can move, and it's just a pawn up for white without any serious compensation for Capablanca, but there is always compensation. The bishop is very strong, although now the knight can even capture it, but there is this 3-2 to two advantage on the queen side, and this is Capablanca's idea. Uh, but not yet with the c5 move. First, rook to c5, pinning the knight, the idea is b4 to win the piece. Uh, so we have queen to e2, and now Capablanca goes into further exchanges while still being a pawn down. Bishop captures on c3, rook captures, rook captures, pawn captures, and now rook to d8, uh, taking control of the, the open d file, and the Rubinstein says, yeah, sure, no problem, rook d1, uh, I will counter your rook, and I don't mind trading down as I am up a pawn. Uh, we have a rook captures, queen captures, and now, again, uh, Capablanca is still down a pawn, and he still has this funny bishop here. Until he plays c5, uh, his position is just weird. Uh, but c5 here still doesn't work, because you lose a pawn. Captures, captures, now queen h5 check, uh, will win you the c5 pawn after the king moves. So Rubinstein would just be uh, up, up two pawns here. Uh, so after queen to d1, uh, first king g8. Uh, Capablanca is preparing c5. He doesn't allow this uh, queen h5 to come with check. Uh, we have h4 by Rubinstein. Now comes c5. And finally, bishop captures. Queen captures and now queen to d6, attacking the c5 pawn. So here, again, we must ask ourselves, what is Capablanca's idea? Uh, everyone, uh, all the great players who analyzed this game uh, years and years after Capablanca was gone, uh, said it, Capablanca was just defending... Uh, a worse position, being down a pawn, and, and he defended very actively, he just found a way to uh, to go about it, but um, who knows, maybe Capablanca saw something else. Uh, here Capablanca's idea was b4, and okay, here uh, Rubinstein has three options, you could capture here, you could capture here, or you could say, uh, I'm up a pawn, I'm just gonna block the position and try, try and do something about that. Uh, in the game, uh, queen captures on c5 was played, but let's see what happens if c captures on b4. The, uh, c captures on b4 would be a pretty much a force to draw, because after queen captures on b4, queen captures on a6, okay, now you get this queen e1 check, uh, going after the f2 pawn, and now if you move the king, then you lose the pawn, so you have to block with the queen, uh, but now comes queen b4, you just make room to start pushing your pass pawn, and it's a very dangerous pass pawn, and a very fast one at that. Uh, queen c1, now comes c4, and now the king must uh, come to help out with the defense. Uh, king e1, c2 check, king goes to e2, and now uh, the king cannot approach the pawn, the queen and pawn create a wall here, uh, but now just queen g4, you take, uh, you go after these pawns. Uh, so now you can go, you, you could go king d2, go after the pawn, but now queen cap, sorry, uh, queen captures, king captures on c2, queen captures f2, queen, king b3, and now queen captures on h4 just leaves us with this uh, queen endgame where Capablanca would have two connected pass pawns and uh, Rubinstein would have two isolated pass pawns. Uh, one pass pawn, this isn't even a pass pawn, and this isn't a... So each of them would have one pass pawn. Uh, but yeah, uh, at least Capablanca would be connected, but but a drawish endgame. So he, did not, he decided not to go for this uh, after b4 pawn captures on b4. Uh, like I said, he played queen captures on c5, but we're gonna... Uh, return to this position. Uh, after queen captures on c5, we have b captures on c3, queen captures on c3, and now comes queen to b1 check. King to h2, and now queen captures on a2. So here Rubinstein is still up a pawn, uh, but Capablanca is the only one with a, with a passed pawn here. So queen c8 check, king to h7, and now queen to f5 check. We have g6 blocking, the queen from a2 is controlling the f7 pawn. This was very important when Capablanca grabbed the d a2 pawn. Uh, queen to f6, and now comes a5. Capablanca starts pushing his passed pawn. g4, uh, we have a4, and now comes h5. Uh, g captures on h5, uh, queen to f5 check, king to g7, and now queen to g5 check. King to h7, queen captures on h5 with check, and king to g7. 
and here uh, it was in this position on move 38 that Rubinstein and Capablanca agreed to a draw. Uh, you just uh, can't uh, keep an eye on everything. You have to keep on checking the Black King. Uh, Capablanca has a very dangerous pass pawn. Also, Queen captures here is a threat, so White would have to lose precious time to prevent all the threats, and it it would just not be able to push this for anything more than a win. But this is something uh, a lot of play a lot of players said about Rubinstein, uh, like Paul Karras also when he analyzed this game. Uh, this is uh, this moment where. Uh, this queen d6 was played and then Capablanca played b4. This is wh when they, where they say it's moments like these that differentiate amazing players from champions. Here you are up a pawn, don't go into into drawish endgames, just push c4 and you cannot lose this as white. I mean you can lose this but uh, yeah, you would have m much greater chances of winning this. For example, now the c5 pawn is under attacked. Uh, you, have, uh, you have to go under attack. You have to go queen a7 to defend it uh, and now comes h5. Uh, after a5, black of course wants to create a pass pawn himself, uh, but now g4. We have a4 and now g5. And here, if you, it's it would be very easy to lose yourself in this. Okay, both of them are amazing endgame players, uh, but it's not a not a very simple position. For example, if you play something like b3 here, just continue pushing, then g6 is very strong. F captures, h captures, uh, and now you have to be careful because uh, there would be some uh, mating ideas. Your back rank is weak. The pawn is controlling f7 and h7. You would have to block this, but then you just lose. Queen e6 check. This is the problem. Uh, because now, king f8 leads to checkmate on f7, we can just show it, uh, and <laughs> king h8 also loses, uh, but uh, uh, I'll let you pause the video and decide why king to h8 loses. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, it's a nifty little idea. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, a a queen winner. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the idea is queen h3 check. King g8, you go queen h7 check, king f8, and queen h8 check. King has to go here, and you win the queen. Easy peasy, yeah? Uh, all right, uh, so that's the problem here. Uh, and like I said, it's not all that possible for white to, to ever lose such an endgame. Uh, but okay, perhaps Rubinstein didn't want to risk too much. Uh, okay, if black doesn't push b3, if black plays king h7, then it's just... Uh, g6 captures captures and after the king moves uh, white would white would always have a repetition of moves if white uh, wished it and uh, if not for example king g8 you could go here but uh, doesn't really doesn't really do anything black can just go b3 and there's never any any danger of white winning this now it would again uh, unwind in a draw but at least with white you would give black the opportunity to make a mistake you could also make a mistake if you're not careful but uh, you know uh, that's why they say that uh, moments like these in chess where, where you can, like, b4, you can either capture, capture, or push c4 and just tell your opponent, no, I'm better here, I'm, I'm playing this for a win, uh, is what, the, what you know, uh, differentiates uh, re really amazing players for, from chess champions. Uh, but yeah, uh, a very nice draw between Akiba Rubinstein and Jose Raul Capablanca. Capablanca mentioned before this tournament that he was not feeling all that great. Uh, and that uh, he he would be very happy with winning second place in this tournament, and he thought that, uh, okay, Lasker is the world champion, but Capablanca thought uh, him and Akiba Rubinstein were the favorites in this tournament. Uh, so yeah, uh, there you have it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed the game and that you are enjoying the Capablanca saga so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Andrea Grossoni, Stephen Green, uh, Stephen Green uh, Xiaodong Sun, uh, Dimitro Frunza, and Marco Sier for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, Marco Sier said that uh, he went uh, to uh, visit Paul Morphy's grave and that he's very grateful that... Uh, uh, without uh, my channel, he would not uh, know about Paul Morphy and that uh, he would miss out on a very nice uh, nice conversation uh, uh, regarding Paul Morphy there. So I'm very happy about that and uh, I hope, uh, you know, th these kind of, kind of little stories always make me extremely happy. So uh, I'm very happy about that as well. Uh, so yeah, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, hopefully with some more interesting con uh, content, checking up on your suggestions, and, uh, you know, we're continuing the Capablanca saga, for the moment checking up on Lila, but also, uh, you know, whatever comes up. So, uh, thank you all, and have an excellent rest of your Saturday.